Hello to all of our viewers from around the globe. This is Stu Jones with the Florida Powerboat Club's YouTube channel as we continue our coverage of that signature Key West Poke and Run event, the 2020 edition featuring members of the Florida Powerboat Club, 160 teams in all as we pick the pace up here on the Thursday departure group with well over 100 Poker Run teams heading from Miami down to Key West. So before we get started, let's thank our sponsors. Let's begin with our 2020 series sponsors, including Deep Impact Custom Boats, their sister company, Blackwater Boats, and their exclusive worldwide dealer, Plantation Boat Mart. Together, these three companies offered the grand prize sponsorship, a $25,000 prize to the top winner of the poker run. And continuing our 2020 series sponsors, Mercury Racing, Wide Open, Mystic Power Boats, Michael Trailers, Nortec High Performance Boats, Performance Boat Center, and Superior Communications, our second prize sponsor. In addition to those series sponsors, we'd like to thank these feature sponsors as seen here on our Key West 2020 masthead, including our marina partners, Hallover Marine Center, Grove Harbor Marina, as well as Black Thunder Power Boats, Good Boy Vodka, Marine Concept Motorsports, Conk Republic Seafood Company, and Concept Boats. And here we are now back again at Hallover Marine Center. This is where it all begins for each departure group. Of course, the last three episodes featured the Wednesday group, a much smaller group, less than 40 boats. But today now, well over 100 boats, many of them staging right here from Hallover Marine Center in North Miami Beach. And members from all over the country, Bud Porter and his team from Chicago, Illinois area. And you're going to see teams from all over the country like this, a 36-foot skater piloted by Brittany and her husband, or his husband-to-be, Bubba Crisco, longtime members of the Florida Powerboat Club and Team War Party. Oh, and please allow me to correct that. It's Mrs. War Party, because officially this is Brittany's boat, and she drives it. And it's been almost two years now since the presentation of that Mercury Racing 450 outboard. Uh, they are taking the poker run circuit by storm. You're going to see a lot of those 450s here on this event. And, of course, it's the center consoles that are the big hit now, too. And a big shout-out to this local builder, Renegade uh, Center Console Boats, along with the marketing and expertise of Marine Concepts Motorsports. Uh, this boat line has come out looking strong, beautiful lines and colors. Going to be about four or five of them, all brand-new models. A mixture of 33s uh, and 38s going to be making the run today. So we're going to see more of them as they make their way on this 180-mile circuit today from Miami all the way to Key West. Now, I just can't help but notice, but look at the variety that we have here on this event already today. The last three or four boats that we saw from Upboard Cat to Center Console back to Upboard Cat and plenty more different models. This is the place where you're going to see virtually every kind of powerboat imaginable. That's what brings the Key West Poker Run its significance, and that's why we call it our signature event. It's the biggest event with the most amount of logistics that we manage every year, and there's no limit to the types of boats you're going to see year after year but of course none of this happened overnight this is the 28th running of the key west poker run that's 28 consecutive years we thought we were going to lose this event due to the covid restrictions but uh, fortunately we were able to keep the event alive here in the middle of november uh, it's the third that we've had back since we recovered from covid the florida powerboat club had ceased operations for about six months totally uh, we managed to get back on the waterways in August with the Emerald Coast Poker Run. Then in September, we made it down with a small group to Key West, uh, just a little later to the Tampa Bay Poker Run. And here we are now in uh, Project 1080, uh, leading the way for this 28th running of the Key West Offshore Poker Run. So if you pay close attention to the screen graphics, uh, for those of you who are new to the show, we provide as much detail as we possibly can about every boat, about every team, uh, what the name of the owner is, what state he's from or country, and the length and the manufacturer of the hull, and of course the engine specifications. Well, we all know what that's going to be. That is going to be Mercury Racing 99% of the time because they have commanded this sport by providing the most reliable propulsion in the form of stern drive products as well as outboard products like we see here on Travis Musgrave's Nortec Center Console. So this is a great opportunity to really take a closer look at all the boats because here they all are uh, moving very slow and uh, milling around getting ready for the start as they idle out of the basin here at Hallover Marine Center. And you can see there's so many boats, a lot of them 
not even in the water yet, going to be launched by these big Wiggins forklifts here at the Hallover Marine Center. And you can imagine just how many boats there are at, on an event of this size. Remember that inside that big barn, there's close to 500 boats in storage on a regular basis, not to mention all of the people that came in from out of town to stage here and uh, take advantage of the services provided by Hallover Marine Center. And this segment is quite a bit different than a lot of the previous episodes that you've seen because we would traditionally be doing a poker card right off the docks here at Hallover Marine Center. But with so many boats and with such a tight schedule to go well over 180 miles all the way to Key West, we decided to forego that formality for this particular event. And the only reason we did that was because we really felt like there was a lot of moving parts to this event, uh, still having you know close to 130 boats running today. And while it certainly is a custom for all of us to pick up the poker cards, it's not going to change the outcome at the other end because, of course, in our world, if you pay, you play. So it doesn't matter if you get the poker cards while you're running. You're going to get all five poker cards when you arrive in Key West with the big party. And that's how we do things with the Florida Powerboat Club. And sometimes just logistically, it's impossible to cram 60 or 70 or 80 boats into one checkpoint. It could take well over half an hour. And to me, that's precious time that we need to get out and be on the waterways. And speaking of that, it's time for our helicopter to lift up. Now, they're going to be flying out of uh, Coast to Coast helicopter in Pompano Beach, Florida. Why do we fly all the way from Pompano? Well, it's just easier. We've got a great relationship with this helicopter company. We've been flying with them for well over a decade. They provide us with fantastic rates and very up-to-date equipment and great pilots. And looking down with this shot, you can see along the beaches of uh, North Miami uh, from this uh, tail cam that it's a little bit rough here today. You can see the swells from up here at about 500 feet. And that's the beauty of departing here from Hullover Marine Center. You can stay on the inside. And we've been doing that a lot lately, it seems. Every time we have strong easterly winds that provide any you know, amount of chop. Uh, and you know, obviously some boats are cut out for this offshore running and while others are not, we would prefer to just take the fair weather approach and not brave those rough uh, swells that are in Hullover Inlet, especially when there's an outgoing tide. And it certainly appears that depending on the level of experience you have, you could really have a good day or a bad day in that inlet. And we don't have the opportunity to have a bad day here. We're at the beginning of a big run going all the way to Key West. And if somebody has a bad experience in the inlet in the first 20 minutes of their day, it could ruin their day. It could ruin their entire week uh, heading down to the Florida Keys. So we're going to tend to favor the fair weather approach and stay on the inside protected waters of the intracoastal just to get through Miami. It takes a little longer. Uh, it takes a little bit of patience, but uh, you know, as long as we know that we're gonna stay on protected waters, it just makes for a better ride for everybody. I know the ladies like it, and it certainly is easier on the equipment. So we're gonna drop in just the natural audio and uh, listen in to the sights and sounds of these first few minutes of the Key West Poker Run 2020.
by now you're realizing that you're seeing some really incredible machines. Uh, one of them uh, truly is this Rum Runner 2004 Cigarette 46 uh, that was uh, built as a one-off uh, theme boat. The Rum Runner was uh, painted by The Art of Design, and uh, it was Cigarette's showboat in the Miami Boat Show back in 2004. Uh, one of our club members purchased the boat, and it's been through about three or four different owners since then. Happy to see it with Daryl Turner from Texas, one of my longtime boating friends and a former president of the Tops uh, Poker Run Club in Texas, and always has a festive, spirited crew on board and a great supporter of Poker Run events. Bill Melchion from New Jersey back joining us uh, after a little hiatus. I haven't seen him for a few years, but boy, he came back in style. And it goes without saying that we're going to see a lot of MTIs on this run. And they always are a contender for the Top Manufacturer Cup Award. That's the top representation on the event uh, based on the number of boats attending. This 52 MTI Super Veloce, uh, a real showstopper with the club. Don Verculin, now the owner, uh, Gino Gargiulo, has always uh, been involved with him. He sold the boat to Don. Uh, but as I understand, I think he wants back in. So I think we're going to see Gino... Uh, showing up at more of these poker runs in that 52. And the same is true with Outer Limits, uh, makers of not just Performance V-Bottoms, but now Catamarans. Uh, they've been building for a number of years, and they're actually getting more into the outboard boat, so we're going to see a lot more Outer Limits on the run. Nortec High Performance, a stellar performance, as always. Uh, once again, with some classic nostalgia here, this Nortec 3600 Super Cat took the world by storm back in the early say 2004 genre and quite appropriately here now we're looking at the 50 Nortec Supercat was indeed its predecessor so Nortec starts big and then works back they actually built several of these 50 Supercats throughout the 90s before they introduced their 36 and here's MTI with a very popular 48 cat Alex Pratt from Michigan he came last year in a 45 foot Nortec center console and he is promoting his new liquor brand, Good Boy Vodka. And another MTI sister ship, a 48 MTI. This is Lane Christensen in Team Fast Lane, all the way from Austin, Texas. And here it is. Uh, Chopper has arrived. It's about a 25-minute flight from Pompano Beach. So the timing is perfect as most of the boats have cleared the basin and starting to head south along the intracoastal waterways. Uh, you can still see it's a little bit overcast over to the east and that may be the reason that we still have some high winds and some choppy seas and so we're okay with that because we've got the intracoastal uh, to make our way down through miami still a lot of activity here at hullover marine center and there's a great shot because you can see those boat ramps off in the background that's what makes this such a great facility you can go in on the ramp or you can go in on the forks with the haulover staff assisting. This shot might indicate uh, some level of organized confusion because there's not really a lot happening, but there really is actually. You know, the boats are making their way into the intracoastal, but we've done things differently for this event. We're not gonna have a formal start. In other words, we're not gonna mill everybody around and then bring in a pace boat and then take off and everyone fires off. It really can't work like that. Uh, when you have a group event like this and you're on the intracoastal waterways, uh, you really need to just let everybody run at their own speed. And that's exactly what we're doing. And of course, remember, there's three different speed classes uh, within the club. Like Travis Musgrave, he's running a 34 Nortec, triple Mercury Racing 400 Verados. And take a close look, you'll see double row seating. So that's something new to the 34 model. They're very popular in the 390 sport, but uh, now they're starting to offer that in the 34 model. And I think it's going to be very well received. So if you look really closely on the side of his uh, center console, a little yellow FPC sticker, that would indicate that he's in the performance class. Not very many of the center consoles would opt for that class of boat, um, you know, that class of speed rather, because typically center consoles like this one, Keith Lewis and his Renegade, they've selected green sticker, which means that they're gonna cruise at between 50 and 60 miles per hour. And that's fairly common and normal for the center console class of boats. That's about all you really wanna go, especially when you have a boatload of crew members you know, look at Keith's got at least eight or nine people on board, and they're not going to be comfortable at much over the 60 mile an hour mark. Uh, so that's why we have this sort of separation in the center consoles, because you look at some boats like this 42 Mystic, you know, Frank Esposito from New Jersey, uh, it's his second one, and it's powered by Quad Mercury Racing 450Rs. So this is a fast ride. I mean, this boat will run well over 80 miles per hour. But, you know, in the center console class, 
a green sticker is where you want to be. You know, you know, cruising at 55 to 60 is really the right speed. Then we move things up to the yellow sticker boats and, of course, the red sticker like these cats. Well, these guys are going to be hauling some butt. They want to go fast, and they can go fast. Uh, safe to cruise, uh, not in the intracoastal, but in the open waters, safe to cruise at well over 100 miles per hour. And we want these members to enjoy the performance of their boats, and that's why we have those different speed classes. But you see, it's not really necessary to differentiate the boats and the speeds when they're on the intracoastal. It's when you get out onto the open waters, that's why we have the staggered starts. That's why we let the red sticker boats go first, because they're going to be cruising at triple digit speeds. We don't want to have massive amounts of overtaking on much slower vessels. Uh, that's when you create uh, unsafe situations, and we don't want to have that on our poker run events. Uh, but when everyone's just running in the intracoastal, where we're all kind of falling under the same speed uh, restrictions, which is, you know, really 30, 35 to 40 miles per hour. We're going to cheat a little and get up a little faster, but we've only got to be careful and be mindful of our speed for the next maybe 10 or 15 miles until we get out of Miami and into the open waters beyond Rickenbacker Causeway. And that was the Broad Causeway, which is essentially 125th Street coming from North Miami over to Bell Harbor. Now here is the point where the ICW splits into two different directions. Uh, Catching up now with Bo Renfro and Greg Del Monte. Let's listen in. And, of course, it's a very scenic ride. Uh, look off in the distance. That's La Gorse Country Club. Uh, we often stop there at the dock and go in for cocktails. Uh, no membership required. I'm kidding, guys. We don't go in there at all. In fact, if we tried, we would get kicked out. Uh, catching up now with Nick and Christy Evans in this 50-foot Nortec. Got some big power on board. Let's listen in. And by the way, a very special welcome to Nick and Christy Evans, uh, their first poker run with Florida Powerboat Club. First time this nortex has been in salt water, it's a 2004 model. And for the power, those are big 1130 horsepower supercharged Ron Potter engines. And we'll now catch up with Frank Sheelan in what might be described as a sister ship. Well, it's a little sister to that big 50. This is the Nortec 3600 Supercat, very popular boat. I want to say it was 2002 when this model was released, but I would like one of our viewers to correct me if I'm wrong. Making our way through Miami, that was the 79th Street Causeway in the background uh, now with Frank Sheelan and that is Lane Christensen on the right. Listen in. Okay, quiz time for everybody out there. Which of those two boats is the one making all the noise? Well, it was that one that we just passed because those Mercury Racing 700s are way louder then this new generation of motor, this QC4 platform from Mercury Racing. Mercury Racing 1350s here in Lane Christensen's 48 MTI. Listen to this. That's about all you're going to get from this uh, QC4 platform. Not very loud motors, but certainly very fuel efficient. And I think they certainly comply with uh, the more current uh, emission and noise restrictions that we have today. But uh, that's what's great about those Mercury Racing 1350s. And it looks as though we're going to have back-to-back -back MTIs now as we move in on Don Ferculin in this 52 MTI. Uh, that is Super Veloce, a boat that has uh, joined the club on many, many poker runs. He purchased the boat about two or possibly three years ago from Gino Gargiulo, who may be riding on board today because they're still partners on the boat, and uh, Gino just needs to get his fix every once in a while. 
What's different about this one? Well, it's uh, four feet longer than that last 48 we just saw. It's got a lot of custom features, uh, but what's under the hatch is those Mercury Racing dual cowl motors. They're 1350 and 1550 if you run them on race fuel and uh, change the calibration with a little key fob. Pretty cool ride and uh, doesn't get much better than that, guys. I love these high-level shots as we're looking back now on, I believe that's a Julia Tuttle Causeway. And that's three in a row for MTI as we now catch up with Alex Pratt in this 48-foot MTI Cat Team Good Boy Vodka. Good Boy Vodka, also an event sponsor. We'll hear more from them later in our series. And this looks very interesting. A center console with a lot of bikinis on it. That's what I like to see. Uh, no numbers on the boat, so we can't identify it. But for those of you who want to join us on these events, it's www.flpowerboat.com. You can call the club office. We'll be happy to get you registered and be a part of the event so you can enjoy all of the great stuff that comes along with being a part of the Florida Powerboat Club and the Key West Offshore Poker Run. And there's that cool camera angle that we introduced in our last episode. Uh, we call it the zip zap angle. <laughs> That's because uh, Ken and one of his guys are on the bridge here at the Rickenbacker Causeway. And it's uh, one of the many uh, camera vantage points that they have as they follow us all the way to Key West. So shout out to Zip Zap Power for helping us out with this footage. And it's kind of a choking point on the run because it's the only place you can pass through here at Rickenbacker Causeway from the downtown Miami waterways. And a shout out to Ron John Levy as he's known on the Instagram channels. Ron John in his 32 concept, uh, one of our safety boats today. This couple traveled a long ways uh, to join us all the way from Kansas. Brant and Jamie Daniels and their boat name of course is their home state namesake, Kansas. It's an old school 32 skater with some big power twin 900s. And here's a big shout out to the performance V-bottoms in the world today. I know we're seeing fewer of them. <laughs> a 42 Fountain, uh, Jeff Heffling, uh, Two Lively Crew, and that 42X Cigarette, Kevin and Melissa Welch. Uh, that one's powered by Mercury Racing 1100s. So for all of you anti-center console guys, we know who you are because I get the comments all the time. Uh, if you like the old school stuff, well, there you go. An old school 42 Fountain and a 42 Cigarette doesn't get much better than that, guys. Those are hardcore performance V-bottoms. And we are really mixing it up with the old school boats here on this event. Brett Lasso, his second event with the club, this 1988 Fountain 40 ICBM, got some big twin turbo engines, and I'm sure Reggie Fountain would be very proud to see her on this run. Steven Barker from New York has been having a blast in his Cigarette 42X, powered by Mercury Racing 1100s. Its home is at Hullover Marine Center. Not a bad position to be in. Just drop the boat in the water, hit the throttles, and get out for some fun. And we saw this boat just a little earlier, Bo and Tiffany Renfro from Georgia, who spent a lot of time in my hometown, Pompano Beach. They have a home not far from where Jackie and I live, and have been great supporters of the club for as long as I can recall. And they just keep on coming as this camera angle takes us over to the Port Miami. You can see that Maersk container ship in the background. Got at least five or six teams coming in hot. And we have yet to identify this cigarette center console. Uh, we think it's part of the event and uh, registered boat with the club, but no decals, no numbers. So we are having a hard time identifying it. Remember, there are over 25 cigarettes registered for this run. So it's hard to single out who is who. Those numbers and decals help us to identify every single team on the run. And just a sneak peek of some of the new renegades on the event, Isaac and Camille Burgos from Florida in this new 33 Open powered by Triple Mercury 400Rs. And just ahead in the white boat, that's Randy Kent from Marine Concept Motorsports who brought all these renegades along. He's in a 38. And Daryl Turner's a long way from home, which is the Houston, Texas area. Team Rum Runner, it's a one-off 46 cigarette, was created in 2004, featured at the Miami International Boat Show. What's cool about this boat is we put it on the cover of the Power Boating in Paradise magazine, and Cigarette took a shot of it and hung a giant banner in their booth for years to come. And we are now going to fast forward uh, about five miles uh, to Coconut Grove which is essentially South Miami. And here we are now at Grove Harbor Marina, our second staging point for the Key West Poker Run and for many of our FPC events. Say hi to John Kosker and his crew on board this brand new Mystic 4200 powered by Quad Mercury 450Rs. 
And another Florida builder. This 38 statement is owned by Keith Overton. He joined us earlier this year for the Tampa Poker Run. Now, before we get out on the waterways, let's just flash back to the Grove Harbor segment where the guys were preparing just a little earlier when we had some rain showers going on here at the Grove. And uh, it wasn't really that serious. It was enough to make everything wet, but it wasn't anything that was threatening enough to stop us from the run today. It just gave uh, Derek's guys a lot more work ahead because <laughs> keeping these black boats clean, well, that's got to be a task. Uh, some boats uh, went in the water just here in the morning before departure. And on the travel lift, that's Daryl Cuddle's uh, 42 Mystic. It's powered by Quad Mercury 400Rs. We saw this boat last year on the Key West Poker Run. Nice to see Daryl back. And it's also fun to watch the Grove Harbor guys work. This is one of the few marinas that does make a lot of use of its travel lift. You know, very few of the marinas in our organization that we use will actually use a travel lift to, to launch a lot of these boats, but Grove Harbor gets a lot of use out of this lift in addition to their big Wiggins forklift. And this is probably a good time where I need to thank Alan Lima and all of the team at Grove Harbor for what you're about to see. This amazing uh, breakfast presentation, they do it for us every year on the Key West Poker Run. And look at how nice they set everything up. And considering that we might expect a little rain, well, they put up these tents for the entire weekend. And I have to admit that Grove Harbor really showed us up because, you know, our standard fare is, you know, nice fresh bagels and fruit and coffee uh, when we do all of our events. But, you know, Alan, thanks, man. You really showed me up right in front of my own members. <laughs> but thanks so much to Grove Harbor. You guys really put on a great show. And we couldn't have... A better partners in with our marinas including Grove Harbor and Hallover Marine Center giving us the facilities to tie the boats up safely overnight with 24 hour security uh, and then then that little perk in the morning to have a nice uh, little breakfast in the belly before we head out I think it uh, is really uh, a great winning combo for anybody who uses this facility which is right on the doorstep to Biscayne Bay now I remember back in probably 12 or 13 years ago when this facility opened up. And it took the Lima family several years just to get it built and everything approved from the city because it's a very historic site. It's the original headquarters uh, for the hangars of the Pan Am airline facilities back in the 40s and the 50s. And I think that's what makes this a part of Miami's heritage. And they, you know, the building sat empty for years. And then the Lima family came in worked out a deal with the city to develop the property and turn it into a first-class marina. And since then, we've been able to put a lot of Florida Powerboat Club members into their storage facility, and uh, we have used it for staging for poker runs for pretty much since day one. And I know that a lot of our club members have been become very loyal customers here at Grove Harbor. And on that same subject of loyalty, well, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue, it doesn't get much better than that. They have been very supportive of the Florida Powerboat Club since we began our safety management program seven years ago, and they're back with us supporting this event. Well, guys, it's about that time again, so let's go. Well, this is the part we've all been waiting for as we get out into the open waters of Biscayne Bay, and it's time for everyone to hit the throttles and get up on plane. This is a magical sequence because I asked everyone to wait for the helicopter to mill around over the pack, and I think it really worked out great. Uh, everybody paid attention and held back, and uh, I had the Project 1080 with the pace boat flag out, and everybody was really chill, getting ready for that special moment when they could all take off together. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't, but I can tell you this, it certainly worked out this time. Remember that we have three classes of boats taking off today, high performance class running over 100, performance class running about 75 to 80, and then of course center console or sport boat class. And look at the beautiful money shot we're getting today. Of course, all the front runners breaking free, they're gonna be getting up to speed real quickly as they spread things out here. And that's exactly what I like to see. Guys, this is gonna set us up for the next several episodes with some high speed thrills as we head to the Florida Keys. Key Largo is our next destination towards Gilbert's. And it took us a whole episode to get from North Miami to South Miami. But the good news is guys, on our next show, we're gonna have all of these boats running at speed and introducing our crews up close and personal. 
Our producer, Ryan McCoy, in the studio assures me that we're going to have at least three or four good episodes ahead as we head from Miami to Key West. And then once we arrive in Key West, plenty of time offshore in those beautiful coastal waters. So, guys, we have got some great shows coming ahead as we feature the Key West Poker Run 2020 edition, 28 years with members of the Florida Powerboat Club on what we consider to be our signature poker run event. So as we approach the half-hour mark, we're going to sign off here from the FPC Studios in Pompano Beach. Remember, guys, you don't want to miss the next episode, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell so you get all of the updates every time a new episode is released. Be sure to check out the website at flpowerboat.com for all of the details about upcoming poker run events in 2021 as well as membership information. You can follow us on Facebook at Florida Powerboat Club and you can follow us on Twitter and on these Instagram pages. Thanks to all of our viewers uh, for your wonderful comments on our page and you guys know who you are and I really do appreciate that. But if you have questions or comments you want to direct to me specifically, please use my personal email at stu at flpowerboat.com. I check that daily and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We have got a fantastic year planned for 2021 with members of the Florida Powerboat Club, so stay with us. Meanwhile, we're going to sign off for now. This is Stu Jones along with our producer Ryan McCoy in the Pompano Beach studio. Have fun out there, guys. Be safe on the waterways. Wear your life jackets when the time is right and always respect your fellow boaters. Bye for now.